Today we're going to be testing out the long requested question of can you cure your silicone molds in a pressure pot instead of a vacuum chamber? And just call me David Bowie because I'm the Dice Goblin King and my molds are under pressure. So I've heard that these have worked from a number of people, but I really wanted to test it and have it on my channel and find out for myself whether it works or not. So I'm going to be using my normal Moldstar 15 slow mold making material, as well as Game Science Dice, because they're sharp edge dice and I want to test them. But I want to say up front, using Game Science Dice to make your own molds and sell them is illegal. So don't do it. This is purely for educational purposes and I wanted to see what they look like. So we're going to use my mold making method, which is taking a much smaller D6 and gluing it to the end like a sprue which it is a sprue we're gonna use some hot glue on the one dot here for this little pip for the dice and that's a great place to put your corner of whatever dice you're using in there this will work for rounded edge molds or molds like this you can see after it kind of cools down it is a perfect setup for a sprue and now we can work on gluing it down into our mold vessel my mold vessel of choice is a Dixie cup. It's disposable, it's about the right size to not really waste a lot of silicone, so I think it's perfect. I put a big glob of glue down on the opposite side of the small D6 so that it will glue down to the bottom of the mold and stick it on in there. The reason we do that is so that when we pour silicone around, that D6 on the bottom will be at the top. What you're seeing here is actually the base. There's plenty of space around there for silicone to build up around our dice, and now we can get started on our silicone. Again, we're using Moldstar 15 Slow, it's kind of my mold making material of choice because it's cheaper than a lot of the others but you can use some of the sort of clear molds if you want to be able to see where you're making your cuts I got some of that on the way and I plan to use it in the future because it's generally better overall so I mix equal parts by volume of this stuff because that's the direction and I mix it around for a good five minutes to make sure that it's thoroughly mixed and to incorporate air bubbles for a proper test. Now I take an old brush that's not really valuable to me and do a tip that people have told me that works better for their pressure pots. I take that brush and I paint it on the numbers on the dice because pouring it over doesn't always get those little nooks and crannies. It's great to paint it on the faces so that you know you're getting silicone in there. I even do that on the under faces, but that's hard to see. I pour my silicone in, pour it on the side and high as you can. That way you try and reduce some air bubbles. but. There, we're gonna get air bubbles. That's really part of the test. Once we've got the silicone in there, we can move on to getting it in the pressure pot. Now for the pressure pot, it's a standard pressure pot setup. I've got videos all over of that and I'm happy to show you. I'll put a link up in the top and in the description down below. Once you tighten these on, essentially what you're doing is you're filling the vessel with pressure. For this test, I'm putting it to around 35 to 40 PSI. That is a good test. I usually run my dice at 30 to 40 PSI, and after it's cured for eight hours, we've got ourselves a usable mold. The outside has no visible bubbles on it, so it seems like the test went okay, but the only way really to test it is to get inside and get some resin going in there. So I peel off the Dixie cup and reveal the outer edge. Again, no bubbles, so that's a good sign. Let's take our X-Acto knife and cut right along the sides. You wanna do long, slow, straight cuts on this. If you're gonna cut all the way through the mold, do a zigzag so that you can line the mold back up easier, but I like to leave my molds cut only halfway down. It's easy to align things and you rarely have spillage that way. Once you get enough out of there, you can pull the D6 free and you can see there's little bits of silicone still connected on. Just take your X-Acto knife, go back over those and nick those to where they're a clean cut. You can take your dice out and then you have a fully completed mold that's ready to go. We're gonna test a second thing in this video, which is something that people always suggest and I've done it before, but we're gonna give it a shot one more time. I'm gonna take the mold vessel, which is another Dixie cup that I've done before and cut a sleeve out of it to put around the cup. This should, prevent us from having to tape things over to seal it up and hopefully we'll get no flashing which last time I did it I got quite a lot of flashing but I also only cut a hole out of the top which meant I couldn't push the sleeve down this way when I put the sleeve on I can push it all the way down and make sure it's got a nice tight grip around the mold I'm gonna take a controlled version of this which is my normal sharp edge dice molds the smaller one there and put resin in it as well now when I'm using art and glow resin it's kind of my standard resin that I like to use because it's pretty cheap and I'm gonna go ahead and put some nitrile gloves on for safety as well as wear my respirator though I don't think you need it for this one it's always better to be safe I know I used some silicone measuring cups before but I thought I was only gonna get a little bit of resin out of this and I needed some extra 
visibility with these tiny cups. Turns out I had more resin in there than I thought, but anyway, if you can, use silicone cups because they're easy to reuse, and this is more wasteful. I mix up the resin for a good five minutes, there's lots of air bubbles in there, and I'm gonna try out a new pigment, which is liquid metal, and I put two drops in there, it's water-based, I don't wanna go too crazy with it, and I was kinda regretting that because it a little, it, it, it a little bit looks like vomit, which <laughs> is okay. I'm a big gold fan, so I really didn't want it to. Maybe I'll try it next time again with some more gold, but I really wanted this test to be true and not be affected by the pigment that's inside of it. So I fill up my control mold, which was made by using a vacuum chamber on the silicone, and then I fill up the one that we just made using a pressure pot on the silicone. We're gonna put both of them in a pressure pot and we're gonna fill the pressure pot up to a similar PSI going up to around 35 on there. So it's an equal test for both and see the results. So first I wanna show the control one. Using the sleeve, we actually get some pretty decent results when it's pushed down like that. There's hardly any flashing, not much of the mold is movable because there's no wiggle room for it. It's already filling up the sleeve that was made out of the same kind of mold material that we put the silicone in the first time. So with this one, I do recommend going back to the sleeve technique. Now let's look at the pressure cured silicone. It's a good start on the inside, no bubbles on the inside, as well as if we flip it around, no bubbles on the outside. And the dice itself looks fantastic. It looks just as good as the vacuum vacuum cured silicone. There's some weird spots on the front of the dice, but I think that has to do more with the game science dice being molded because they're the ugly dice, they're not exactly the greatest ones, but the edges, there's no bubbles around them. All in all, it looks fantastic. It's a bit smaller than the other one, but again, that has to do with the size of dice that I've chosen. But you can see compared side by side, there's essentially no difference in overall quality. So save yourself 120 bucks. Don't get a vacuum chamber unless you want one and find using a vacuum chamber to be more fun or easier. Get a pressure pot, it'll do both jobs for you. Had I known this, I wouldn't have done it. And again, make sure you don't mold things out of game science dice. This is purely for educational purposes. I'm definitely planning on throwing this mold away when I'm done with it. It was just a good test. Go with the sleeve and go with the pressure pot. I highly recommend it. So that's it for this video. One thing I do want to mention is that little cutie down there at the bottom is our new mascot. He is the Dice Goblin. He's based off of the design I did when I said, hey, here, I'm trying to make a design and I made it in paint and it looked really bad, but I had a professional artist take a crack at it. And now we have this absolute cutie as our profile picture and he's going to be plastered all over YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, etc. So I'd die for him. I don't know. He's just cute. Please subscribe if you might want to see some more dice making content Content or other content like this in the future. Let me know in the comments below some other things that you might want to see because this video came from your suggestions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a fantastic day.